Uh, hello and welcome again to, uh, Let's Play Hearts of Iron with, uh, me, Kyle McLeod Sr., and Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Who also goes by Mike19147 <laughs> on YouTube. So, anyway, here we are in Hearts of Iron 3, and I'm playing as France, and Mike is playing as the UK, and, uh, this is on normal, and... All, all normal settings and everything. So, Mike, what are you planning on doing? I am planning to reinforce Africa and then also try to support you at the Belgian border. Yes, and about the Belgian border, I am actually going to expand the Maginot Line as the, as the French should have done because they have level 10 forts all on the border of Germany but nothing on Belgium, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. Let me see how much we're done. Okay, I think I have enough. It's only like four oh, everything. I I actually stuck with a couple of strategic bombers, <laughs> but they're pretty much wooden planes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I f I find that the uh, the the, the strate strategic bombers seem to work best when you when you deploy them with uh with fighters because because I remember when I played as Germany, all all I'd have to do in order to destroy the the planes that were bombing my factories is just send up like four interceptors in a group and that's that's all really because they never really had any any fighters escorting their bombers so <laughs> yeah <laughs> just pick them off all the time. So in your experience, you have been playing. Very easy as Germany. I guess this will be a little more of a challenge. It probably is going to be, especially when I when I see how ungodly horrible the IC of the French is. I mean, Jesus Christ, they have only 67 IC. I had like... <laughs> I should consider me lucky when I got 92 done. Yeah, I, I, I think I would. I mean, considering that you have close to 100, I don't even have close to 100, so... <laughs> And but it, it, the UK got tons of leadership actually. You got twenty seven. Yeah, and I have like an insanely low national unity, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put everything into that when it comes to comes to the spies, because <laughs> I don't want my unity to be unity to be too unity to be too low. Because if I if he takes Paris, then it's all over. I don't I don't want that to be the way that it turns out. You know, so. <laughs> I'm actually trying to focus on espionage and well, uh, diplomacy for the most uh, research and uh, diplomacy because I want to be able to align most countries to our cause, but I still don't want to get them too early. That uh, way they will just get washed. Yeah. I'm then I'm researching lots of industrial stuff like resources and the education, also computers and radar. I think I actually have a good idea about what I'm going to do. I'm going to just build up the forts as much as I can, and then, um, and then when it comes time for the war, I'll just, I'll just uh, cancel all the fort projects and then, and then mass all my units on the, on the Maginot Line, just invade Germany, because he won't have that much there, because he'll have to fight on Poland first. So, I'll try to catch him off guard there. But right now, I'll just try to make it so it seems like I'm. You know, just leaving all my guys at, at regular yeah. places, I, you know. To be honest, I don't think you can hold the Germans off, but I think you can delay them a large amount of time. I think I can hold them off. I think the problem is, is that I just don't have any forts on the Belgian border, and they're obviously going to go through there. But since I have ten on everything that's bordering Germany and Luxembourg, I should just focus on, on southern and northern Belgium and just leave middle B Belgium undefended with the forts, just leave all my motorized units there, because that way they can respond to the tanks faster through the center, mm -hmm. so. Hey, I'm actually researching the Thompson uh, Mark 1928, <laughs> which I've <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I was thinking maybe you should invest in militia, just as the France resistance is. The what? Things don't go as plan planned. Yeah, probably should. But I'm just I'm just ordering my forts right now, so damn, I don't have enough IC to do all these. Looks like it's gonna take an okay amount of time to build them up, but Alright. Oh, oh I think I got it. Okay. 
So let me see here. What do I want to leave all my motorized units on? I guess I can leave uh, Sedan and Long Guyon with the. Uh... Okay, I'll make I'll make Lily, Cumbrai, Hirson, and Charleville the uh, the ones with the motorized units, and I'll make uh, uh, Dunkirk and Hazebrook the ones with the the new Maginot line. <laughs> But he, I actually think I'm a little bit against uh, some stuff in what's, what's going on in England this time. But I was thinking of releasing some of the colonies, yeah, like uh, Guyana. But I still want uh, their precious resources. <laughs> well, Who you knows? could release them as a puppet state, but that won't really change anything. <laughs> yeah. They'll just I actually. Uh, Decreases income by fifty percent, even though you use them as a puppet. Yeah, and that pretty much is what the U what the UK did for a lot of their territories. I mean, like you know, like some of their territories, like like uh, Belize. They s I think they still they still pretty much uh, claim authority of Belize and uh, and Canada. I think yeah, they they uh, you know Canada is still loyal to the UK because they're they're still loyal to the Queen and or King. You know, just the the. British royalty, I guess, and uh, so yeah. But I'm thinking about the situation in Africa. I just noted that England got about three militia regiments there, yeah, and a couple of HQs. <laughs> yeah, if so. if I actually get the ability to uh, support the Spanish Civil War, I will uh, do it because <laughs> I love it. They they already have the shame of defeat. Active for the uh, well, not not active, but uh, <laughs> but for um, but for the uh, national um, what the hell do you call these things? The national um decisions, they they already have shame of defeat uh um available to be deployed as soon as it's um applicable. I guess I don't know. <laughs> but I'm um uh, thinking, are there any use to invest the in defense against Japan from our previous? In the uh, well, to me, when I play, well, 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 let me <laughs> let me just elaborate on the whole idea about Japan. Um, they are a total wild card. Last last time I played as Germany <laughs> on very easy, they took Shangxi and then and then nationalist China, and communist China, and Xibi Sanma just rushed them, and now and now they're like at the borders of of North Korea. I mean. <laughs> it is unbelievable how how much they sucked when I played as Germany. I mean, it's like Italy was taking all of North Africa and the Middle East, and I was just marauding through through, through all of the Western Soviet Union. I mean, it's like it was just a total. <laughs> it, it was it was like the total opposite was going on in Europe as it was going on in you know Asia. It was just really funny. So um, I don't know. You know, probably you want to use ships the most. You know, I'd I'd use I'd use the Royal Navy as much as you possibly can in in Europe. But if you can, send as many ships as you can to you know the territories of Singapore and Burma, and especially uh, uh, what is this? I think oh Brunei. Yeah, you should send it to Brunei too because there's there's nothing there right now, and that's probably where the Japanese will try to invade. Because there's it's hardly even defended at all. Yeah, I'm trying to mobilize my, all my troops in all of England uh, and India and Burma because, um, to, uh, for example, all in India, I'm transporting all to Calcutta. Yeah, you could even try to invade Japan, you know, if you attack like an undefended part of it and then just try to take over. Parts. I was thinking of taking like Taiwan. Yeah, that could work. But they usually have a lot of men on Taiwan, so. Maybe maybe you could like try to invade uh, the southern tip of Japan first because they're probably not going to have that much there because that would be really sudden and everything. So I don't know. You could try it. <laughs> I was thinking of doing that when they attack Shai. Oh yeah, that's way too early. But I I don't. They're not thinking of an attack there because. Well, I don't know, but I think they'll be busy in sending all the troops to. China, maybe, or even the Mediterranean at that point of time. Yeah, I found that sometimes Japan will invade China from the sea route to, you know, to try to get in a second front on China. But sometimes they don't do it, and that and that usually means that they won't win. So I don't know. It's either. It's. I got an idea. Do you want to spam Germany with spies and put that on? If I do disrupt research and you do disrupt 
production. Um, sure, I'd have to decrease the priority for everything else, but... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I've got the Soviet Union to contend with, too, I guess. <laughs> Alright, well, um... Could we start? Yeah, sure, but, uh, just... Uh, I was just gonna say about the spies. I'm not really sure how to actually make them make them work to that to what we were saying. You know about the about the whole thing about uh, select uh, Germany there. intelligence. Then uh, on priority, just put it on max, and that way you can just go to and choose all the options. You just press uh, disrupt production. But doesn't that piss them off? I mean, like like if they they if they're, if they've they don't it on they won't detect you. They only detect you if they got on counter espionage. Oh, I see. But what if they do have counter spying on? Well, then I'm screwed, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but I, they won't attack you until they got the dancing event when they attack Poland. Yeah. Attack and attack yeah, for true. scale invasion, but. I was thinking. <laughs> but uh, maybe you should add some fortresses to, like, the rivers around Paris. I think the, those would be good defensive spots. I'm just gonna put it on the border, because I think I think if I put it on the border, then I'll just, I'll yeah, just happen up. Maybe if you if you're on the border, I think that's good enough, actually. Yeah. Thank you. My god, I don't even have rocket tests. France? You suck. I'm sorry, but you really do. <laughs> I mean, my god, 67 IC? <laughs> 67? Seriously? Should be 69. That would be utterly perfect. <laughs> I, be I bet I'm not even going to get an event for, for the Spanish Civil War because I literally couldn't even fund it. Oh, God almighty. I've, I've got a glorious total of 74 cash. I have 74 francs. <laughs> My god, I'm poor right now. <laughs> I suppose well, the depression was in France as well, so... <laughs> well, I got... Uh, 65 pounds. But, uh, one money in this game is, I think that's uh, equal to one million. Oh, yeah. Well, then I guess I shouldn't be f unfair to the French then, I suppose. <laughs> I, way, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> By the way... What the hell is with this with this uh, navy in Marseille? I have like ten ten submarines there. What the hell? I didn't even know France had that many submarines. <laughs> oh yeah, you have a good chance to use them. <clears throat> but uh, did you, hey, I would really appreciate your submarines raiding the convoys between Italy and Africa. That would help infinite amounts. Undoubtedly. Oh, oh, oh my God! I got two carriers. Six, um, uh, what all? Six battleships, six cruisers, and tons of others, and two submarines in Alexandria. Yeah, and I and I have the glorious, uh, um, what the hell are they called? Uh, oh, the French Foreign Legion, right? I completely forgot what they're called. I have them in North Africa. I think that's what they're supposed to be. And uh, wait, uh, oh, cool. I'm gonna move them up to. Uh, Italy because I plan on invading Italy as soon as as soon as they declare war on me or whatever you know. Yeah. Completely forgot yep, yep. about all my other colonies too. I guess I should move all my stuff up. Well, why do we have only an HQ over there? That doesn't make any sense. Oh well, I suppose I'll just move that up. But I still doesn't really want. Like, if you can you imagine this? Like, if France invaded Germany instead and they took Libya. Imagine that none of the territories in Africa, except, well, none of the territories would really be 100% independent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Ethiopia would probably be a puppet of England, and, yeah. Christ, this HQ is completely isolated in southern Africa. What the hell? <laughs> I can't even move it out unless I move a transport down there. There's one in Korea, Kore. Uh... Yeah. Wait a minute, Korea? What? <laughs> Korea. I didn't Korea, even know that Korea. existed. <laughs> Korea? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I guess I have my own Korea, and, and uh, Japan has theirs. <laughs> Korea <funny>. town. <laughs> yeah. What's with that HQ in the Bahamas? Or, wait, the 
what, well, the Virgin Islands, I suppose. What's with all these random HQs all over the place? Seriously, if you have an HQ, you can't do anything with it. It's just sitting there. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> it's like all these HQs are all over the place, but they don't have any units assigned to them. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what's, wrong, what's wrong with France and the UK right now? <laughs> oh. They reoccupied the Rhineland. And before they even did it in real life, too. Screw you, Hitler. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invade your ass. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> Don't take that literally. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, are you... F I don't think you need that many troops at the... Like, max, like, two infantry, like... Divisions at each province in the Maginot Line. If I, if I put that many guys in the well, I think I only need like one infantry division in the Maginot Line for every every part of it because it's because it's ten forts. You know, you know the forts level ten. I mean, I mean unless they just bomb the living shit out of it or or just attack it from all sides, there's no way they're gonna get through it. So um. I think I think if I put all the infantry on the Maginot Line, actually I'm gonna reorder the my forces right now. I'm gonna put all the infantry on the Maginot Line and all the all the motorized and tanks on the on the uh, uh, prototype Maginot Line. <laughs> God, I got all these motorized all the way over there. I gotta put them over here. Yeah, if I put all my guys in the center where I'm not building the Maginot Line, I could just rush through there and just take all the all the uh, all the provinces away from Germany that they've taken from the Netherlands or something. When I look at it, I actually have a higher level um, light tank than the Germans do. I start out with the uh, 1936 version, whereas they start out with 1934 uh, or 18. I think it's 1918 version for them. I don't think they start out with any light uh, heavy tanks. Uh, light tanks? Oh, uh, I mean heavy tanks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm in light tanks, not, not heavy tanks, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> What's this battle cru cruiser, the Dunkirk? <laughs> don't, don't they have any three-letter thing before it or anything? Like the French Royal Navy or something? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I just forgot about FOP. I was like, what are the Italians doing? But <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They are actually a war with Ethiopia. Let me just get done with this stupid <laughs> production thing. All right, I'm gonna look at Ethiopia. See if I can do anything over there. Oh my god, I've got a lot of guys over there, but they're all mountaineer divisions. <laughs> oh. Yes, and Italy has an ungodly amount of men down there, so I don't want to. I don't want any part of that unless I'm going to war war <laughs> too <laughs> early. <laughs> Those guys are only militias, almost 100% militias. Yeah, and I think he's got a lot of uh, infantry, though. Yeah, oh, it, it's like 75% militia and the rest is infantry and HQs. Yeah, that's probably it. I, I can't really remember because I that one that one time I played as Italy, I did actually in, um, do the Ethiopia battle and everything. And uh, I don't know. It was sort of fun, but I couldn't really tell what I had exactly because they were spread out all over the place. Okay, let me see here. So if I have one... If I have, like, one infantry division on every single part of the Maginot Line, then... I'm pretty much all set right now. Let's make sure I have something over there. Okay, there's at least one over there. Alright, I guess I'll just put them... I, I guess I'll just fortify the, uh, eastern Maginot... Well, maybe I should fortify the western one, actually. Okay. So I'll have at least two infantry divisions on the... Oh, Christ. Uh, hey, fucking I just got one of those awesome ideas, but still kind of crazy. Yeah. What is your I crazy am, idea? <laughs> I gotta bombard every single road at the Italian border in Libya. Really? That way, <laughs> yeah, that way you won't even be able to get close. But I can't do that because it's my own territory. Oh god. <laughs> I didn't even know that part of the plan, my god. <laughs> it sounded sort of good, like, oh, you're gonna destroy his roads, that's cool, but 
Wait, you're gonna destroy your own roads? What? Yeah, but it would be. <laughs> wait, what if I cut out his infrastructure while it's in my territories? Uh, well, then he could only move forward, I suppose. <laughs> it probably wouldn't yeah. matter anyway. They probably just reheal. I think. I think the best thing that I and you can do is really just try to defend honestly while while we <laughs> wait for the U.S. to come into the war because. I tried to invade England in Hearts of Iron 2, and I took a few t I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I tried to invade Germany in Hearts of Iron 2 as England, and I swear to God, I took a few territories, and then, and then the fucking Germans just did a 180 degree turn from Poland and just came right at me, literally. I mean, they just completely surrounded me, and I couldn't even do anything. <laughs> but for hey. some reason, they were too afraid to attack me. <laughs> King George V of the United Kingdom passed away on January 20th, 1946. King your father, an acti active king on both political blah, blah 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 blah. Oh, that's that's uh. What the hell is his name? Oh God, I'm trying. To... <laughs> all all the names of those of of the of the English kings, you know, it just it, <laughs> it just becomes a muddle, you know. It's like Henry, Edward, Richard, and there's so many of them. Okay, <laughs> it, it's Edward right now. Oh yeah, that's right. It's like. What the hell is his name? I'm thinking of. Like doing something against my arm and armor ornaments minister because his name is Neville Chamberlain. Oh, Neville. Sh oh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna, I see. I'm gonna change him out of someone called. Well, he had a cat called Nelson, <laughs> <laughs> and he pronounces Nazis in a fun way. So. I thought I thought Churchill did too. I thought he called them Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I took. Cat, yeah, Churchill had a cat named Nelson. <laughs> oh, oh, you were talking about Churchill. I thought you were talking about Chamberlain. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would never appoint him. He was the ornament minister about five seconds ago, but now it's Churchill. Oh, I see. Churchill. Sure, sure. 